good morning to all of you let us start people will start coming not a problem right so uh, we can start meanwhile so uh, i am dr navin kumar and i will be the host for this morning session let us uh, first uh, I, i must thank you uh, all of you uh, to come here in the second day of this uh, smart city workshop uh, it is saturday morning nice to see you all here uh, we have uh, uh, in this morning session we are going to discuss about smart governance also people call it as e governance because smartness comes from e right whether it is e health e governance or e services or service whatever so in this uh, vertical of this today morning session we are going to discuss various aspects of smart smart city that is e governance or smart governance and we have a huge uh, list of expert who are going to deliver their talk in this session so what i'll do is i'll uh not only welcome you all of you but uh, we must thank the sponsors who have supported this event philips intel uh, and ge uh, and uh, uh, this uh, workshop just to remind you that jointly organized by bangalore section comsoc communication society and ps society chapter of bangalore and uh, uh, yesterday if you had been here and some of some people are new to this uh, i mean yesterday you were not there so our R ex art and director announced that this type of workshop will be happening on a regular interval either i'm uh, bangalore city or elsewhere and so on because this is the initiative from it police smart city right uh, so this is a uh, first in uh, of its kind in bangalore i will not waste time because already 10 15 minutes we are late so what we'll do is uh, uh, we invite the first speaker of the session today and uh, professor vardwaraj from isc in fact uh, i ask him to give a brief profile and uh, he has given a very brief profile to me <laughs> uh, so you you know it is very difficult to to write an abstract if you are uh, writing a paper and he has written the abstract of a abstract so i will just read out his brief profile professor bardwaj is a professor in ec department of iisc he also heads the robot boss center for cyber physical systems and his research interest are in large scale iot system So let us welcome Professor Bardwaj. We will come to know more about him while he talks about the things. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Navin. Good morning, everyone. so uh i think uh you know in the software world we keep coming out with various versions and i think we need to adopt that approach with everything so that's why i can kind of title my talk smart cities uh, 2.0 uh with an aim that uh, we do it in a way such that uh, we unleash urban innovation via data empowerment and uh, i'll kind of explain what i mean throughout this talk so uh over the last 4 uh, 5 years uh, we kind of embarked on this journey for smart cities uh, which i call smart cities 1.0 and uh, actually it's a very interesting initiative very i, I would say uh, uh it's a great, it's a visionary initiative definitely it's the first of a kind initiative in the world to get so many indian cities simultaneously you know become smart and uh, to to get go towards smarter operations and uh, one of the centerpiece of this activity what emerged i mean when they started off 
uh, I think they did a great job of actually consulting a lot of the stakeholders in every city. They had this competitive way of uh, actually, you know, getting cities to make proposals, shortlist, and so on. And uh, I think that was actually a very good initiative, and I, I think that kind of worked out well. Uh, but after that, I think from there to the actual implementations, uh, some gaps have emerged, and I think that is uh, a natural consequence because these kinds of things are happening for the first time. One of the things uh, from a technological components which emerged is this notion of the integrated command and control center, IEEC, and that is kind of really been that has been the centerpiece of Smart City 1.0 implementations. And the idea is that you have this big room, a lot of people are sitting there, like you know, you have this ISRO and NASA Space Network Operations Center, you know, a lot of you know, dashboards, you know, and people are just watching and doing things and so on. And uh, you know, so, so that it's like a nerve center where you get visibility into a variety of uh, city, the, the subsystems in a city. And uh, the aim is that you know, everything is there in the same place so that you have a holistic view of what's going on. And uh, I think it's a, the, the intent has been excellent and very good, uh, but because there is no standardized blueprint of how you go about doing it, uh, we have a lot of ad hoc implementations which have emerged, and uh, you can argue as to how useful these implementations are and how much really the city's operations have become smart. And uh, this is something even the ministry recognizes, and they are doing a lot of uh, introspection and analysis and coming up with objective frameworks to evaluate how well these ICCs are actually working and what should you do uh, as the next phase. And uh, uh, you know, the, the, I, I think the, the, because uh, it's kind of ad hoc, you know, uh, how can you extend it, you know, there's some limitations, you know, how usable these are and uh, whether it, you really you can incorporate future innovations is questionable. So, um, you know, while there are some drawbacks, I, I feel that it's still a fantastic base from which uh, we, we, we can build on and look at the, now the next revision of uh, the Smart Cities 2.0. And uh, one of the important things uh, we would like to enable as we go forward is that uh, you want to allow multiple vendors and multiple players to participate uh, in any every city, right? You, they should not get locked out. You want to really enable new solution providers to come in and develop solutions on the Smart City platform. I think that is the only way because the new problems emerge, you want to have new people to come in and solve and should not get locked into your old vendor, right? How do you enable that? So that is kind of really the key question we want to answer uh, as we go forward while we build on existing uh, investments and infrastructure. So uh, the thing is that uh, the reason the current implementations are uh, I mean, they, they are doing a job, so, you know, but, but where they could kind of improve is that I think the, the way, the blueprints are not standardized. So, um, so what that ha does is that, and then, you know, a lot of the components are probably duplicated and uh, you cannot reuse that easily. And so it's not possible to do cost sharing across different implementations, uh, uh, you know, across different cities. So, for example, you know, just to give you a concrete example, even devices, right? If you take a normal dumb light, they are interchangeable. I can buy Bajaj, Philips, etc. But as soon as you go to a smart light, smart street light, you cannot get locked in because uh, even though physically it might plug in, you won't be able to talk to it, right? Because the interfaces are not really standardized. The second important thing is that while many of us in industry and in generally we understand the value of data, uh, I don't. I don't think the cities yet fully understand the, the enormous resource they are actually generating and sitting on, and uh, uh, so so and also you know they are not able to actually use that resource to solve the problem. So this data empowerment uh, is kind of missing, uh, both from a technology perspective as well as from a cultural perspective. We are generally not a data-driven culture. You know, we kind of like to go by gut feelings and opinions and prejudices and so on. Um, and then, of course, uh, you know, the technological lacuna is that the interfaces, data models, there's nothing, nothing is really standardized. So it's kind of all, everyone has their own way of doing things. And uh, it kind of becomes a little uh, cumbersome to actually do some of these things. And uh, what that does is that the extensions, additions, you know, you kind of have to work with the system integrator and really get it done. And for every city, you might have to do a different job for doing that. And what so that kind of really is an inhibitor for third-party solution ecosystem to emerge. Uh, 
uh, you would like to have any pr any plumber can come and fix your uh, leaks in your house but you know if your data is leaking etc you have to you know probably only those vendors might be able to come and fix things um, and then uh, also a lot of times uh, you know when you have a small problem you can get a technician to come and fix it right so you don't want to kind of you want to enable that kind of a system where little problems get solved quickly by paying small amount of money you know you don't go through elaborate tendering process and so on and uh, the problem should get, should be kind of unbundled you know you should, things the design should be unbundled so that you know small pieces can be given to different you know uh, different people and because of lack of standardization of course you don't have economies of scale right uh, ideally what you do in one city you should be able to port to another city very easily and uh, even as uh, as solution providers application developers you know when you have a large market you can invest in r and d and you, you you have a chance for economies of scale because the same thing will work across many different platforms and uh, uh, and because of all these issues we don't really have a you know you would like to have like an android play store for smart cities right a smart city play store where you have a lot of applications which are developed different you know administrators different people are able to download and get things to run and uh, um, also uh, you want to be able to kind of be at the cutting edge of technological innovations uh, advances happening based on data which is really machine learning ai is how do you kind of bring in some of those do you wait for your vendor system integrator to actually bring it in at some point you know you cannot really want to open it up and let new innovators come in and provide that and that is why we are saying you know let's look at smart city 2.0 little differently with an aim to now okay the base level problems are solved you know you are getting now your camera feeds you are seeing on your television screen you are getting some alerts etc now let us see how you actually enable a whole ecosystem to emerge new players new solution providers to kind of get into the game and offer solutions right uh, that is kind of our goal and vision how well we will we will we will be able to do it i don't know whether it needs a smart city 3.0 to really fully realize it that will uh, only time will tell so uh, what we are focusing on in isc and this is activity which we started about couple of years back uh, there was a large uh, study group we formed uh, we have some members uh, in the audience sitting here dipin and so on and uh, we had uh, a, some small amount of funding from the ministry of electronics and information technology to kind of look at how what are the gaps in terms of use of iot in smart cities that is kind of the uh, problem statement so in the process while we started doing the study we realized that really we should focus on i mean there are many problems but we maybe we should focus on data if there was one thing we wanted to kind of attack it's like enable a a system which will allow more effective use of data and uh, because data is what will lead to smartness without data you will have no smartness so can i let's see what we can do to focus on that problem and you know you have data coming in from various uh, sources including iot sources so you have streams of data coming in and that is going to become more and more and more right so that is now a given you have data from sensors all kinds of transactions lead to little you know alerts messages logs events data from various embedded uh, uh, devices video sources audio sources etc etc right so you have these data streams which are now coming in and uh, and the cities are investing a lot of money to actually put all these sensors and devices and so on you also have data which has kind of static i when i say static i mean of course you update it and change it and modify it but they are static in the you know kind of longer term you know they don't change that often like data streams right uh data containing either department of transportation you have uh emission record of all the vehicles right and uh, that will be useful so for suppose for example if you want to do pollution uh estimation uh just imagine that you could kind of look at the vehicle and perhaps somehow interact with that department's uh, database and get some information about how bad the vehicle is of course there is a serious uh, implication of privacy for something like this but we'll kind of discuss that uh, so the idea is that you have these kinds of databases available and they are kind of all locked up in different uh, departments uh, and we just we are using the term registries for it and uh, you know you will have registries for various entities uh, you know all all kinds of registries people manpower departments assets devices etc etc and uh, and then 
this is not there much and that is something which we have to work on which is actually to create meta information about the data because there is data but what does the data actually mean you know uh, what are the valid values uh, and so on so that is essentially metadata which is data about data and that is uh, you know stored in terms in, in, in some kinds of catalogs even that is you can think of it as a registry but what actually it has is things like there are data schemas ontologies also leading to knowledge bases and things like that. So there is, uh, so that is not there and that needs to be created as we go forward, but I kind of consider them as part of the data layer. Now you have this data and really now you have to kind of make it easily accessible for you to be able to do something with the data. And that is where the key thing which we are actually proposing uh, is this notion of the data exchange layer, right? And what the data exchange layer, uh, it, kind of think, it kind of has two pieces. There is a piece which is kind of, you can think of it as a control plane, which really is like an enablement piece, right? So that is a piece with which you kind of, the idea here is that it's not just open data where you keep put all data in the public. We are not advocating that. What we are saying is the owner of the data should have the ability to share the data with whomever they feel they need to share it with in a, in a secure, protected you know, way. Only if you allow data sharing to happen, you will have new things emerge out of it. And to enable that data sharing, this authentication, authorization, lifecycle management of sources of data, provisioning, access control, auditing, many aspects are there. Also, we are kind of bringing in, we are saying, you know, in the future, maybe you will, it, there will be an economy around data, so you want to also bring in payments, right? So you, you know, you have the source of data, you are willing to sell the data to someone and uh, you need to be able to monetize. So uh, for example, Ola will pay some money to Google to get some data about the traffic conditions, right? <coughs> or you might actually buy data from ISRO about the satellite imagery, right? So, I mean, that is already happening. So it's nothing new, but why not also let the cities uh, have that ability with, of course, the provision, privacy is a very important thing. You cannot kind of uh, ignore that, uh, you know, within the constraints of uh, privacy and the new data, you know, the, the, the privacy laws which are coming, you should be allowed to do that. And for cities, data is a recurrent thing which is coming, right? So that's, if you want to have a sustainable smart city solutions, it has to be built around that somehow. And then, of course, the data plane of this data exchange is really where the actual data kind of flows through. And you know, you have things like data brokers, uh, which will allow you to kind of uh, support multiple consumers of data. You know, be in a, in a scalable way. Uh, another important thing which we are essentially saying is uh, secure analytics on clips. The idea here is that uh, when you ask a question about the data, uh, maybe. I mean, you, you know, the owner of the data might allow certain kinds of questions to be answered, you know, to, so to preserve anonymity. Uh, so certain aggregate questions could be answered uh, and things like that. So where are those questions answered? Where are those queries run actually? So you need to have, provide the ability to run these analytics in a secure uh, space to prevent uh, unauthorized leaking and hacking. And, uh, and, and really, uh, especially for certain kinds of data like video and so on, you kind of also want to run it close to the source of the video. And that is where this edge analytics or the edge query processing becomes important. And the hope is that with this kind of a data exchange platform, what you build on top, I mean, what will emerge on top is a whole solution uh, ecosystem. And uh, in this solution ecosystem, the cities should be able to kind of offer micro contracts, right? I mean, you, you, you kind of say, okay, there's this little piece of a problem you know, these, uh, you know, uh, these street lights in this particular ward, why didn't you guys manage, right? They should be able to kind of give a contract like that. It's a small amount of money, uh, local, uh, uh, you know, local startup of some kind should be able to get in and, you know, really involve that. You don't, you don't always want to give contracts to these big time players, uh, right? So even small people should be able to get in, local, enable the local entrepreneurs, local technical manpower, like your Hathway cable guy, you know, with a cell phone, he comes and sets up the cable for you, right? I mean, why can't we have people like that? You know, you can provide a lot of employment. They come in, put a smart street light, configure, you know, put an IoT gateway, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? You enable such kinds of uh, technical work to get done by local people. Of course, uh, uh, you know, you have to have multi-vendor uh, so that the cities are not locked in. Also, you want to have problems solutions develop very rapidly, you know, you can't wait for years and so on, you know, because now the, the era of 
continuous solution development, continuous delivery, right? In software, we have that CI. So, so that is where the cities also need to go. And rapid customization, you know, in a, in a month or two, we are done. You know, you, you know, we ask for something, it gets done. You want to kind of get to that kind of a, a system where the cities are rapidly evolving the city infrastructure to keep up with the demands. And uh, hopefully, a lot of this thing will lead to uh, uh, kind of solutions which are driven by data. And uh, even the cities use data to uh, optimize their operations. And, uh, and in the future, it will lead to a new economy based on data where the cities become an important uh, player in this. Like you have the BDA complex where you have people come, shops set up, so the cities create a virtual BDA complex <laughs> you know, where uh, you have all these uh, data buyers and sellers coming in. And even a, a, a fruit seller, uh, you know, one of some of these vendors are kind of able to participate uh, in these kinds of uh, digital transactions. So that is kind of our vision. And uh, the, the, the key layer for that is the data exchange layer, which what we are kind of advocating is that it should be a, it's like the public road. The government should make it available for people to use. So the data exchange layer should be a layer developed for the public good. <laughs> Completely open source, you know, no single vendor controls it, uh, and it's done in a way to really promote innovation both in the bottom and in the top. So that is kind of our vision. And what does this particular layer have? So we are calling, we are saying it should be an open platform. What this layer has, as I explained earlier, there are two pieces. There's a control piece and a data piece. So the control piece supports things like security, privacy, registries, access to registries, discovery of data, etc. Ledgers, you know, future. See, again, this is something where we have to keep, allow the system to bring in new technologies as they are emerging, uh, distributed ledgers, etc., uh, support for payments and metering and so on. And then the idea is that in the bottom you have actually the data sources. It could be IoT devices, it could be pieces of software, uh, your, your, your analytics code, which is actually analyzing raw data and producing alerts and messages. So that is another data.